dobutamine a drug with dual action so dobutamine is one of the drug which increase the force of contraction so it increase the inotropic activity that's why this drug can be used in the treatment of cardiogenic shock cardiogenic shock is a condition where the heart is not responding in such emergency situation dobutamine injection can be given to increase the force of contraction of the heart and this dobutamine can also be used in the treatment of heart failure where there is a decreased cardiac output whenever all the other treatments are not working dobutamine can be given as an inotropic agent to increase the cardiac output in the patients with heart failure and dobutamine can also increase the rate of contraction but at a low dose dobutamine is mainly show the increase in the force of contraction without increasing the rate of contraction of the heart but at a very high dose only the dobutamine can increase the rate of contraction as the dobutamine increase the both force and rate of contraction at a high dose it can be used in the one of the condition like the stress echocardiography in which the dobutamine injection is given to assess the stress response of the heart ability of the heart to withstand the stress caused by the dobutamine it is used to diagnose any abnormality in the cardiac structure and walls in which the dobutamine proved useful when it is given for a short term dual action of dobutamine so now we have seen that dobutamine is one of the drug which mainly increase the force of contraction and at a high dose only it increase the rate of contraction dobutamine is a stereoactive compound and it can have the two isomers that is a plus dobutamine that is a dextro dobutamine as well as minus dobutamine levo dobutamine the plus dobutamine is selective for the beta 1 receptors whereas uh, minus dobutamine is selective for the alpha 1 receptors even it can have the two isomers but dobutamine is always given as a racemic mixture and because of this dobutamine can show its dual action on the beta 1 receptors as well as on the alpha 1 receptors but it is more selective for the beta 1 receptors with little effect on the alpha 1 receptors now let us see the structure of dobutamine so dobutamine is having the structure like this and within the structure we can observe one of the important moiety like this this is nothing but a catechol amine you can observe the catechol group which is attached with the ethyl amine so this is a simple structure of a catechol amine and catechol amine without the hydroxyl group at the beta position is simply dopamine so dobutamine is a structural analog of the dopamine but surprisingly it is not having the action on the dopamine receptors and it is even having no action on the renal vasodilatation dobutamine is a modified structure of the dopamine which is not having any affinity towards the dopamine receptors so what are the modifications of the structure compared with the dopamine we can observe that alkyl chain is present on the nitrogen of the amine group in the dobutamine so if we count the number of carbons so this is 1 this is 2 3 and 4 so now it is having a butyl side chain so that's why the name of this dobutamine having the letters but but so but indicates it is a butyl side chain is present which is attached to the amine so that is butamine now this butyl chain is further attached with the para hydroxy phenyl ring system in this way dobutamine is a large structure compared with the dopamine and it is modified such that uh, it is having butyl substitution on the amine group which is further attached with a para hydroxy phenyl ring system because of these structural modifications dobutamine is having no affinity towards the dopamine receptors but it is selective more for the beta 1 receptors with little effect on the beta 2 and alpha 1 receptors so we can observe a stereoactive center at the second position because of the stereoactive center dobutamine can exist in the two isomers plus as well as minus isomers plus isomer is more selective for the beta 1 receptors whereas minus isomer is more selective for the alpha 1 receptors how it acts just we have seen that dobutamine can act on the beta 1 receptors which increase the force of contraction which lead to the increase in the cardiac output because of this inotropic activity dobutamine can be used in the cardiogenic shock as well as in the treatment of heart failure and apart from this beta 1 receptors dobutamine can also show a little activity on the alpha 1 receptors which results in the vasoconstriction 
and dobutamine can also have some action on the beta 2 receptors which results in the vasodilatation. Now you can observe that the dobutamine can act on both alpha 1 receptors as well as beta 2 receptors which produce vasoconstriction and vasodilatation respectively. So both of these effects are counteracted so that we cannot observe any significant raise in the blood pressure with the low dose of the dobutamine. But as the dobutamine dose is increased at to a higher doses because of uh, increased effect on the alpha 1 receptors as well as uh, increased rate of contraction, we can observe a slight increase in the blood pressure by the dobutamine. Now let us see action of the dobutamine on the beta 1 receptors. So beta 1 receptors are mainly present on the cardiac muscle. So dobutamine when it is attached to the beta 1 receptors, the G protein coupled receptors are activated which will activate the enzyme adenyl cyclase. So once this adenyl cyclase is activated, it will convert the ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP is very important uh, secondary messenger which will stimulate the protein kinase A. As the protein kinase A are activated, they increase the intracellular calcium in the cardiac muscle. And calcium, because of its ability to form a complex, it can form a complex with the troponin so that it forms a calcium troponin complex where troponin forms a block between the actin and myosin. So as the troponin is removed, now this actin and myosin can slide on each other so that uh, cardiac muscle is undergoing contraction. In this way, dobutamine can act as an agonist on the beta-1 receptors, there be increased intracellular calcium levels, there be increase the force of contraction and increase the cardiac output. Because of its potent action on the beta-1 receptors, dobutamine shows a significant inotropic activity. Now let us see its action on the alpha-1 receptors. Alpha-1 receptors are mainly present on the vascular smooth muscle as well as on the other smooth muscles. So when the dobutamine is acting on the alpha-1 receptors, it will stimulate the another enzyme system phospholipase C. So when this phospholipase C is going to be activated, it will cleave the phosphatidyl inostal biphosphate into the two molecules. One is the DAG, diacylglycerol, and second is the IP3, inositol triphosphate. So diacylglycerol is going to stimulate the protein kinase G which increase the intracellular calcium. And IP3 can also increase the calcium release from the intracellular stores, so it also increases the calcium release within the vascular smooth muscle. And as the calcium is more available in the vascular smooth muscle, it results in the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. In this way, dobutamine can produce the vasoconstriction by acting through the alpha-1 receptors. But dobutamine can also act on the beta-2 receptors which are also present on the vascular smooth muscle and when these beta-2 receptors are activated, they are going to increase the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is having a quite opposite role to the calcium and it inhibits the contraction resulting in the vasodilatation. So because of its action on both alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors, effect of the dobutamine on the blood pressure is not significant at low doses. But at a high dose, the dobutamine can increase the rate of contraction of the heart, which may result in the, a slight increase in the blood pressure. How it is given? We have already seen that the dobutamine is used in the emergency conditions like the cardiogenic shock, as well as it can be used in the short term use like stress testing. So dobutamine is always given in the clinical setting monitored by the physician. Because of this, it is given as an IV infusion and it is not available as a tablet or capsule, it is always available as an IV infusion and it is given only in the hospital setting. Side effects of the dobutamine. As we have seen that uh, the dobutamine mainly increase the force of contraction, but at a high dose it can also slightly increase the rate of contraction. So the side effects of this dobutamine are related to the, the increase in the rate of contraction of the heart. So it can produce a tachycardia, as well it can produce the palpitations, the awareness of the heartbeat in the patients and it cannot produce the hypertension as the rate increases as well as vasoconstriction increases if the blood pressure may be slightly increased. But dobutamine can also produce a sudden precipitation of a hypotension so there is a sensitive balance between the alpha 1 receptors and beta 2 receptors as well as we have the reflex mechanisms so normally the patient may observe hypertension but suddenly hypotension may also be precipitated in the patient. As it increases the cardiac work, it can also precipitate the chest pain 
and other side effects like nausea and headache in the patients. In this way, dobutamine is one of a drug which is having the dual action. It shows main action on the beta-1 receptors with little effect on the alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors. And even it is structurally related to the dopamine, it is having no action on the dopamine receptors and does not produce the renal vasodilatation. And its main effect is on the beta-1 receptors which increase the force of contraction, thereby increase the cardiac output. Generally, it is having a little chronotropic activity, but as the dose of the dobutamine increases, it also increases the rate of contraction. So this drug is also having little effect on the alpha-1 receptors and beta-2 receptors, where alpha-1 receptors produce vasoconstriction and beta-2 receptors produce vasodilatation. Because of these quite opposite effects, the raise in the blood pressure is not significant at low doses, but as the dose increases, the blood pressure may be slightly increased because of increase in the rate of contraction. And dobutamine is a stereoactive compound where the dextroisomer is selective for the beta-1 receptors and levoisomer is selective for the alpha-1 receptors. But still, it is given as a risk mixture with more predominant action on the beta-1 receptors.